Hi everyone and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Tascam Model 12 in a standalone mode connected to an external keyboard, in this case my Korg PA3X, or it could be a MIDI sequencer, or synthesizer, or sound module, anything basically that has MIDI in and out and has audio out. And the MIDI will be connected to the MIDI in and out of the Model 12 to clock synchronize the Model 12 with my keyboard or the sequencer. And the audio output, I've got the left and right connected to the left and right input of my channels 9 and 10 as a stereo signal. On my Tascam Model 12, I have the option of the MIDI selected to send MIDI clock and song play position, SPP, turned on. So that way, whenever I press play, stop, fast forward, rewind, and record, and when I change the clock signal of my keyboard from internal to external, it will follow the Model 12's MIDI clock and song position. So basically, my Model 12 is becoming a master clock, and my keyboard will become a slave device. So master and slave. I know I have been accused in the past of using those two words, but um, I have no other way of explaining. I've been using those words for, for the past 35, 40 years. So um, if there is a better way to explain it, a master slave situation, please use the comment below to tell me. But otherwise, I don't give an F um, how you want to interpret um, interpret this. So that's, that, that's basically what it is. So I've got a master device and a slave device talking to each other. So basically, I'm going to record an arrangement, a simple arrangement in the sequencer within the keyboard, and then I'm going to synchronize that sequencer to the, uh, to the uh, Model 12 using the MIDI clock, um, as I explained. And then when I press record onto my channels 9 and 10, and press record, the MIDI sequencer will follow and the instructions of the Model 12 and start playing. Now I can simply record the stereo output of the keyboard, which will include drums, bass, or, uh, guitars, arrangement, whatever the arrangement is, into stereo channel. But the other advantage of synchronizing those two together using the MIDI clock is that I can now separate the drums and the bass and other instrumentation into separate tracks because now everything is, um, you know, with the song position. So I can mute all the other um, channels, the MIDI channels, and leave just the drums. And then I record the drums on 9 and 10. And then when I return back to the beginning of the song and choose another input, to record let's say my bass and then mute everything else other than the bass and then press record again so while the drums will be playing from my multi-track recorder within Tascam I can record the drum the bass guitar and so on so that way I can separate all the different instrumentation um, within um, the Tascam model 12 so that I can add different effects or apply different mixing, uh, maybe put some automation during a mix down, make the song a bit more dynamic, because everything in the keyboard and the sequencer is looped. So whether it's four bars or eight bars, and you're listening to the same loop over and over again. So by separating and automating it, I can give a little bit more dynamics. I can make the song more lively as much as I can uh, using the arrangement of the keyboard and then of course I can add maybe uh, guitars acoustic electric guitars I can add vocals background vocals and I've got enough channels to be able to do that well I hope that sets the overview of what I'm trying to do so next let me record a simple arrangement of a, a song that um, a style that I have selected into my sequencer and then we'll apply the synchronization and then we start recording each instrumentation on, uh, on uh, separate tracks. I have my 5-pin DIN MIDI connection, which are these things here, at the, connected at the back of my keyboard. One is in, one is out. 
and that's the only way you are able to connect the model 12 to an external sequencer you make sure that your external sequencer does support five pinned in if it doesn't if it's usb only then this obviously won't work because remember model 12 is running independently there's no computer connected in this um, scenario at all so let me connect that at the back of the uh, unit and that's uh, MIDI out to MIDI in and MIDI in to MIDI out and vice versa. And then we're going to be able to utilize that later on. Now the Tascam Model 12, if you, it is connected to a PC, will not only use that MIDI connection as internal door controller, but you can also use that USB to MIDI conversion bit as well. So your Model 12 can become that converter to convert a USB connection into MIDI external 5 pin in MIDI device. But in this case, we don't have that. Okay, we are set and ready to go. So let's record some simple arrangement. The arrangement I have selected is the dance Motown. So I'm just going to go into sequencer and recording mode and it's ready to go. And as I mentioned, yours could be different. You just have to follow your manual. Okay, we're ready to go. Let's uh, start recording. And as I mentioned, I'm recording purely in the keyboard. Nothing is being recorded on the Model 12 at the moment. All done that's the arrangement hopefully it was short enough and sweet enough and uh, now i've got the sequencer and all played now i can play it back and it's all good so let's set the clock from its internal uh, tempo or timing into the external on my keyboard and you can do the same on your system as well I'm just going into my MIDI setting and selecting from internal to external MIDI simple as that now it just won't play because it's waiting it's just waiting for my model 12 to actually send a signal so now I should be able to press play on my model 12 and my keyboard should actually follow That's what we are hearing right now. Okay. So it's all ready to record. Now we can actually record a stereo signal, um, the audio on my nine and 10. 
Let's give it a try. Make sure that it is recording properly. Of course, now everything will be synchronized to the tempo within Tascam. And also the bars. Yep, the bars and everything match as well. We're all good. Now I'm just gonna switch to this in to multi-track. Let's switch to the multi-track and turn it off and let's play it back and see if the audio will be playing from here. It certainly does. As you can hear, there's no sound from there. That's coming back from the multi-track recorder. So I can apply compression, EQ, and everything else. Well, we've got that far. So now, as I explained, what I'm going to do, without boring you any further, is record the drums, the bass, and the rest of the arrangement onto my three tracks. So I will have a stereo drums, the stereo arrangement of the rest of the instrument and my bass guitar separately. Okay, I've done all the recording. I've used three tracks, um, five all up, because I've got two stereo and plus the bass. So I've recorded drums on one, the uh, rest of the instrumentation on another stereo, seven and eight, and my bass is on six. So now I have one, two, three, four, five available channels that I can record, as I mentioned, um, acoustic instruments, guitars, vocals, etc. So let's have a listen to see how all that work. Now the keyboard has been disconnected. It's no longer associated. We've done with it. So it's all taken care of. So everything we're hearing is from the model 12. So let's uh, press start. That's my drums. A little bit of compression, some EQ. Let's add our bass. And the rest of the instrumentation. As you can see, okay now. we've got our bass and we can adjust the, um, the EQ make it make it bossy or less bassy or we can even completely replace the bass and play live bass if we wanted to so that way Well, that's it. I hope this video was helpful. Now you know how you can utilize and use the MIDI connection to synchronize your external MIDI devices. And in this case, you can also learn how you can separate all the different instrumentation on the different MIDI channels into diff different audio channels. So you can synchronize them so you can record all separately and, um, and then mix it within the mixing board itself. Of course, you can copy those files from the SD card into your DAW and do further mixing and editing if you wanted to. But this is recording without any external uh, computers or anything else. I hope this video was helpful. I know it was a little bit lengthy, but if it was, make sure you give me the thumbs up 
And if this kind of videos are something that you like, consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. And I'll catch you in the next one.